the multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis is the second most common cause of neurological disability the first motor most common the most common cause of neurological disability is due to accidents or trauma so amongst the diseases it is the most common cause of neurological disabilities it is a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system only it does not affect the peripheral nervous system why because myelin is present in both peripheral and central nervous system the white matter of the brain contains the myelin the gray matter does not contain myelin the disease affects the white matter only that has myelin the myelin in the central nervous system is different from the myelin in the peripheral nervous system the myelin in the central nervous system is formed by the oligodendrocytes and that in the peripheral nervous system is formed by the schwann cells it is the a specific protein which is formed by oligodendrocytes is attacked in multiple sclerosis that protein is absent from the peripheral myelin sheet which is formed by the schwann cells the myelin wraps around the nerve fiber in multiple layers and then when the disease affects the myelin it is broken or is removed from the places the main function of the myelin is to conduct the impulse in a fast way when the myelin is destroyed the conduction is either slowed down or blocked or it may be it may produce an ectopic impulse over there if the conduction is slows down or blocked this is called this is a negative block but if it at the site which is which is exposed it produces ectopic impulse this is a positive block why there is a positive block the positive why the positive conduction occurs normally when it's a normal the under the myelin sheet which wraps around the nerve fiber these gated sodium channels are in fact buried in that so when it's removed it they are exposed and potassium not the sodium potassium channels are buried under that not the sodium channels so the potassium channels are open the potassium efflux occurs and there is depolarization causing ectopic impulse generation at the site that is why calcium channel blockers are used for ectopic impulse generation in multiple sclerosis the exact cause of the multiple sclerosis is not not known it may be due to genetic factor it may be post infectious or it may be autoimmune the major histocompatibility complex on chromosome 6 is a genetic determinant of multiple sclerosis some other chromosome also have loci for the disease hlad class 2 is most strongly associated with multiple sclerosis in the monozygotic twins the concordance rate is 30% for the disease and the first second and third degree relatives of the patient have increased risk of the disease among the infections coronavirus similar to measles have high antibody titer and also many other viruses like human herpes virus 6 also implicated in the disease chlamydia pneumonia is also disease has a relapsing and recurring course why because the myelin once destroyed the oligodendrocyte keeps on trying to repair and fix the problem and then they repair it the symptom disappear and then the disease appeared another side so it that's why the disease has a relapsing and recurring features 
द रिलेप्सिस एंड रिकरेंसिस मे अकर आफ्टर अदर डिजीज लाइक अपर रेस्पिरेटरी इन्फेक्शन द डिजीज इज़ मोर कॉमन इन कोकेशन वाइट फीमेल्स एंड इज मोर इन टेम्परेट क्लाइमेट इन हाई सोशो इकोनॉमिक ग्रुप एंड स्टार्ट इन द मिडल एज द ट्राइड ऑफ सिम्टम्स सी एन एस इंफ्लमेशन डी माइलेशन एंड ग्लियोसिस अकर्स एंड इन द ब्रेन द प्लेक्स आर शार्पली डीमार्केटेड दे आर ग्रे एंड पिंक एंड दे आर डीमार्केटेड विद द सराउंडिंग वाइट मैटर एंड दैट द लीजन इज टफ वैन इट रीचेस द ब्लड वैसेज what is gliosis gliosis is the scarring and why it's due to it's due to proliferation of astrocytes so what happens in an acute lesion of the multiple sclerosis that mononuclear cells the t cells that indicates an autoimmune pathology of the disease and the macrophages and the b lymphocytes they appear there inducing inflammation with normal surrounding blood vessel wall as i as i already told and if you see my mri shows burst of multifocal inflammations due to t cell migration the myelin basic protein mbp is an important t cell antigen and mpp reactive t cells they are present in the peripheral blood these t cells they are attached to some substances they cannot pass the blood brain barrier but they, they have to break the blood brain barrier by attaching certain substances and then they enter the cns and attack the myelin sheet and macrophages and b lymphocytes also attracted there the b lymphocytes produce the plasma cell that produce antibody and further aggravating the symptom and inflammation the tnf and tnf the tumor necrotic factors and inf interferon directly attack the oligodendrocyte myelin immunoglobulin g characteristically increases in the csf the clinical features the clinical feature may be abrupt or in serious in onset number 1 ataxia why there is ataxia ataxia is due to cerebellar pathway demyelination and also because of the cerebellum involvement the speech is, is scanning the disease has both motor and sensory disturbances amongst the sensory disturbances there are tingling numbness and the feeling of a wet raw or tightly wrapped body part this is what is described by the patient feeling of a wet raw or tightly wrapped body parts the weakness spasticity hyperreflexia extensor plantar reflex and absent superficial abdominal reflexes visual disturbances the optic nerve is a nerve which traverses in the middle of the brain from the front to the back so it's very common to have the features of disturbances of the vision there may be diplopia optic neuritis may be monocular but may be bilateral the optic disc how is it it is may be normal or there may be papillitis the muscles involved ocular muscles involved are most commonly is the abducens because of the abducens nerve which is which supplies the lateral rectus muscle and lateral rectus function is the abduction of eye movements so this there is a weakness of the lateral rectus that causes nystagmus and horizontal gaze palsy when the lateral rectus is paralyzed 
due to the damage to the sixth nerve due to the abduction nerve there is also a slow adduction the adduction is a function of medial rectus when one eye abducts the other eye adducts this is because of the fact that medial longitudinal fasciculus connects the abducer nerve to the opposite oculomotor nucleus so that is also damaged so the abduction is slow when the sixth nerve is damaged the cognitive dysfunction so what is the cognitive dysfunction is multiple sclerosis that there may be an early or late memory loss impaired attention and judgment and emotional liability how about depression in multiple sclerosis depression occur in 60% of the cases and the incidence of suicide is eightfold more in multiple sclerosis okay what is lermit symptom in multiple sclerosis lermit symptom is a momentary current on neck flexion or sneezing that is spreads down to legs but this symptom also occur in cervical spondylitis and why does it occur because the myelin is defective and it produces ectopic impulse because of the opening of the gated potassium channel that causes depolarization and as i earlier told you and that leads to the current that is spreads to the legs apart from these all these features of multiple sclerosis there may be paroxysmal symptoms they include a brief ataxia a diplopia dysarthria a paralysis a spasm or a pain there may be a trigeminal neuralgia in and that is lancinating because of the involvement of the fifth cranial nerve remember that fifth cranial nerve supplies to the face sensory supply the bell's palsy is not associated with ipsilateral taste loss normally if there is a bell's palsy because of the seventh cranial nerve involvement not in multiple sclerosis there is taste loss but here there is no taste loss in multiple sclerosis in the bell's palsy what is facial myokemia the facial myokemia is the flickering movements of the orbicularis oculi muscle again involvement of the facial nerve damage the diagnosis of the multiple sclerosis there is no diagnostic definitive diagnostic test for the multiple sclerosis so there is a diagnostic criteria so two or more symptoms and two or more signs of white matter tract involvement that should be lasting for one day and they should be separated one month apart so last for one one day and separated apart one month two symptoms and two signs of the white matter involvement after the these signs or symptoms are present then mri must have four lesions of white matter or if periventricular region more than 3 meter millimeter in diameter should be an mri is positive in more than 90% of patient with multiple sclerosis who meet the diagnostic criteria so what is a dorsal finger so dorsal fingers they appear on mri on a sagittal section and what is the sagittal section that divides the body into two equal two parts right and left so on mri there appears multiple white bright lesions along the margins of the corpus callosum this is very important diagnostically 
because this is the area that is spared in cerebrovascular disease so there is no cerebrovascular lesion so the lesion present here are very important the oligoclonal bands the oligoclonal bands are also present in multiple sclerosis how many oligoclonal oligoclonal bands should be present two or more oligoclonal bands should be present and how about the immunoglobulin G they are increased in CSF the next test is evoked response the evoked response as I earlier mentioned may be slow or absent conduction and it's in visual auditory motor sensory pathway in 90% of patient CSF findings in multiple sclerosis increase immunoglobulin G oligoclonal bands oligoclonal bands are absent at the onset of the disease there is mononuclear cells like T cells and also B cells and the macrophages and there is a pleocytosis the treatment of the disease is with interferon and glateramer the interferon beta and glateramer are the two drugs that are approved by FDA for the treatment of multiple sclerosis. What is the treatment for acute attack of multiple sclerosis? Methylprednisolone intravenously is given in acute attack and then for two days and then after that prednisolone orally. The other drugs used are azotyprine that decreases the exacerbations methotrexate once a week decreases the disease activity cyclophosphamide decreases the progression of the disability IV immunoglobulins they also decrease exacerbations and methylprednisolone I already told decreases the sustained progression the other drugs are also used like for spasticity, baclofen or diazepam and for the pain, trigeminal neuralgia, tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline. The drugs used for trigeminal neuralgia and painful dysesthesias are A, B, C, D, G, A for amitriptyline, B, baclofen, C. Carbamazepine, D. Dilantin, and G. Gabapentin. The drugs used for the paroxysmal system, paroxysmal symptoms are carbamazepine and gabapentin. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS. There is no treatment for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and if there is respiratory muscle involvement there is early death ALS is a progressive motor neuron disease the initial features may be selective involvement may be only upper or lower motor neuron involvement but ultimately involve both upper and motor upper and lower motor neurons and it presents with a patient having both type of lesions even in one limb the lower motor ne neurons involved in the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis are the anterior horn cell of the spinal cord and they cause asymmetric weakness that affects one limb initially and cramping typically in the morning so the cramping in the morning the muscle wasting so it's a motor and lower motor you know so muscle wasting weakness and areflexia and atrophy they occur early in the disease fasciculation with fasciculation in bulbar palsy motor neurons of the brain stems are involved that also leads to the lower motor neuron type of lesions so there will be dysphagia, dysarthria and dysphonia. 
the upper motor neuron involved are corticospinal tract and that leads to the the features are the same spasticity and hyperreflexia there is difficulty in chewing swallowing movement of the face and tongue the pseudobulbar bulbar palsy that also involves the upper motor neuron of the brain stem and the spinal cord degeneration of the corticobulbar fiber leads to increased expression of emotion for example increased laughter and weeping that is due to degeneration of corticobulbar fibers so a patient having laughter and weeping is ALS the affected neurons shrink and accumulate lipofuscin in them lipofuscin the neural cell that leads to denervation and muscle atrophy loss of cortical neuron leads to thinning of the corticospinal tract and loss of fibers in the lateral column that leads to lateral sclerosis so that is the reason lateral sclerosis a myotrophic lateral sclerosis there is a loss of cortical neuron that leads to thinning of the corticospinal tract and loss of fibers in the lateral columns so what is normal is ocular motor neurons and sacral parasympathetic neurons are unaffected that innervate the urinary bladder and bowel so no ocular abnormality motor abnormality and bowel and bladder functions are normal sensory system and cognitive process are also normal no sensory loss in ALS they are normal even in the late state ultimately there is finally there is symmetrical involvement of the muscle and this is characteristic of the ALS since there is no diagnostics test so there is a diagnostic criteria for definitive diagnosis involvement of the three of the following four motor neuron region is required bulbar cervical thoracic and lumbosacral exception is progressive upper or lower, lower motor neuron disease at one side with gene mutation with dismutase the pathogenesis of ALS is that this is due to the hyperactivity or excessive action of glutamate glutamate is the most abundant excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain and excessive activity of the glutamate causes excitotoxic cell death that occur in ALS and also there is mutation by superoxide dismutase a familial form of ALS is autosomal dominant and there is gene mutation encoding superoxide dismutase in 20% of cases and there is a long arm on chromosome 9 and also a long arm on chromosome 2 and chromosome 15 differential diagnosis most important differential diagnosis with cervical uh, spondylitic myelopathy spondylitic myelopathy causes cervical compression or due to the or a tumor can also cause cervical compression that can cause both upper and lower motor neuron feature so what excludes the disease is that if there is intact sensory system because if there is sensory feature then it's not an ALS the CSF should be normal there should be normal x-ray of the spine and normal bladder and bowel function that should be present in ALS to be diagnosed intact sensory system normal CSF normal x-ray spine normal bladder 
बॉल फंक्शन नॉर्मल कॉग्निशन 